All right, welcome back to the show. Hey, so we have the radio show every weekday, every weekday, not every week. The TV show's every week here, Saturday mornings. But every weekday, we have a radio show, 6 p.m., 1170 a.m. KCBQ. On that show, we talk about current events. And really, I, I try and focus on what's happening, why should you care, and what can you do about it. So we talk about things not just about real estate and finance, but also credit, legal issues, family issues, stuff that's so important. My number one job is to be your consumer activist. We used to say consumer advocate, but I don't just want to give you great information. I want to actually be a resource for you. That's why we encourage you to visit us online at craigsewing.com. There's a contact form. It comes directly to me confidentially, and we can help you. So one of the big front page stories that you've probably seen has been the Ashley Madison story. Right? It was, uh, the, the media tabloids, the, the, or tabloids really like this stuff, and I think divorce cases are probably going up from it. Well, aside from that big story, you know, these are real life matters that people in San Diego are facing all the time. We get questions about it all the time. And so what do I do? I go out and I get the best family law specialist in San Diego to come on the show and give you great information. And here she is right here, Ilona Antonio. Good to have you on here. Good morning. Anything, anything uh, shaped up from the Ashley Madison or more divorces coming through to you? Uh, no, not yet. Yeah. But if it did, I probably would keep it confidential for yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, you have to. You know, interesting yeah. story. And, and, uh, and sadly, I think people find this stuff to be entertaining. I remember you've seen Judge Judy, I'm sure. I know. I used to love schedule. that before I became an attorney. Then, you know, doing consultations with people, we hear it all the time. I stopped watching the show because that's the day to day of a lawyer. So you, you have to help protect families, right? And sometimes it's uh, the, the husband, wife, and there's a lot of crazy things that are happening. I mean, I, and I. The very first time I had Ilona on our radio show, I mean, you got great stories, right? We don't Every share day. Yeah, we don't understand. <laughs> but, like, what are some of the stuff you're seeing? What advice can we give to families out there, people that are going through things of, you know, they got stuff like restraining orders, uh, court orders, things like that, complex divorces. Help us uh, learn a little bit today. Well, in family court, you can seek remedy whether you're married or not. Because many people nowadays don't get married, but they may share, share children together. They may share assets. Um, now, the family court does not have jurisdiction or power to divide assets between unmarried people. It only uh, is applicable to those who are married. However, uh, if you have children, family court has jurisdiction to make custody, visitation, and support orders related to those children, including paternity orders. Mm -hmm. So... Um, there's a variety of orders one can seek through family court. You can file for divorce, obviously, and in that proceeding, you can ask for spouse support, child support orders, exclusive use and possession orders. Let's say there's dispute over who's going to stay in the house, but there is no domestic violence. You can file a petition with the court to ask for excuse, exclusive use of the home and also exclusive use of other properties, such as a car. Like the other day, I had a, someone come in who said, you know, she hasn't been working for many years. Husband is a millionaire, and he's like, okay, if you want to leave, go. I'm taking your car away, and I'm going to buy one that's going to be like worth two th for $2,000. You're not riding this expensive car. <laughs> so, I, you know, and she felt very powerless, and I told her, and she had no idea what the financials of during their marriage look like because hmm. he didn't want to disclose it to her. Right. So I think she left feeling uh, empowered because she realized that when I calculated the child support and spouse support numbers, she's going to be getting a lot more not only to afford uh, living in a very nice place and to drive a very nice car, but although husband has been repeatedly um, declining the, her, the right to see any paperwork or to tell her where they have bank accounts, where they have investment accounts, once she files for divorce, there's an obligation within 60 days to disclose all of that information, to provide statements as of the date of separation. So she's going to know everything that exists. And, you know, one of the things that I, one of the things that I um, advised her of was send him an email, say, I want to see all those, all those um, assets that we have or statements. If he's going to tell you to, you know, beat it, yeah. I can use that later <laughs> in court because spouses have fiduciary duties to each other, duty to disclose information, duty of honesty, loyalty, uh, same as partners in a business have uh, under corporate code. You have a duty to disclose and keep your books open and available if someone requests to see them. Same thing applies to spouses. So if one says, no, you can't see it and you document it, not only will they have to disclose it once you file the proceeding, but you can use that to then seek sanctions if they continue to decline the right well, that's to That's really interesting, though. So 
Now, I, I haven't got married, right? Mm -hmm. So I haven't gone through the, the legal process of, of getting married. But when you, you just said something really, really interesting. We use the word fiduciary quite a bit on the show. When I talk about financial advice, I say, if you're connecting with a financial advisor, I encourage you to connect with a fiduciary because the way that they earn their incomes is not attached to the commission. I think the advice is a lot better. You just referenced it as a husband and wife. There's a fiduciary responsibility to your spouse. Absolutely. Right? So now I'm assuming that's part of the legal documentation of getting married. No. I mean, when you get a marriage license, it doesn't say that. That's the California Code. Uh, it's Family Code 721 that says there's a fiduciary duty between the spouses. It's Family Code 1100 that says if... Uh, for example, during the marriage. Do you actually know all of these codes? I mean, I I'm telling, I want our audience to know that there is not any notes here of, of you referencing this. This is very unscripted. I teach at California Western School of Law, so like this is, you know, I teach my students this. Yeah. And so I know all the code sections are fresh. I'm writing an exam for them right now. Um, but, you know, under Family Code 1100 B and C, if a spouse during the marriage made unauthorized gifts without asking, hey, can I give this $3,000 to my children from the other marriage? Or, hey, I'm going to give $500 to, some, to a couple at a wedding. If you're married and, like, you didn't ask your spouse or they didn't consent to it, and all of a sudden you're going through a divorce, and now they have a problem with it, we pull the credit card statements, we pull the bank statements. You can highlight those unauthorized gifts that were given without your consent, and community can seek reimbursement for that. And it's also considered a breach of fiduciary duties if this was recurring and continuing without the spouse knowing. Uh, so, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of things attached to once when you get married. It's definitely more complicated. It's you just in, it's insane to me how much you know this space. It's I mean you're a, a wealth of knowledge. I, I highly encourage anyone if they're going through anything to to certainly connect with you. But I'm thinking we need to have like a spin-off reality show <laughs> from the American Dream, like the American Dream Court, the American Dream divorce or something we need to have you host it I, I can only imagine <laughs> well as you know it's interesting from the radio show this is uh, earlier this year we had somebody reach out and said hey I need a, a great uh, attorney to help me in this case and it was a, a gentleman and I said well we can connect you with Ilona Antonio and I think she's number one in San Diego that's who I would use and he said I think my my ex already is <laughs> a, aligned with her so I was like yeah you're you're in trouble <laughs> Hopefully you're following the law. Elon, always good to have you on the show. Uh, you're you. so busy. You're running around town. It's always good to have you in here uh, this morning. And thank you for sharing all this with us. All right. Earlier this uh, week, we did something really cool. So you know America's finest city is San Diego, but we tend to forget the that island over there that uh, is just an amazing place, Coronado. Ruth Ann Fisher, top producer in real estate out of Coronado, had us out there to learn what's going on in the real estate market. There's some really expensive high-end properties, and you're going to find out there's actually some very affordable properties as well. So a lot of fun for us. We went out to Coronado. Uh, let's go check it out. 